Yeah, so now we're on the, we finally got our, our um, PTA Zoom fixed. Um, so this is the new Zoom login for the PTA. So the password, um, I think I already put it in the shared password document, but I'll make sure it's in there. Um, but that way too, um, yeah, I can pull up any of these recordings after the fact. Everyone will have access to it so you can pick up those recordings. And then I'm also going to start getting the, um, the general meeting this Thursday. I'm going to start getting those recordings onto the web page so that people can have access to the recordings if they can't make it to the meetings. So let's start with our quick check in. Our circle question is, uh, when is an instance in your life when you have felt excluded from something? Does anyone want to start? I could start. Right, um, the first thing I thought of is being a kid and, you know, when you would play games and people would pick teams. And, you know, I was always one of the people that was picked last. Aww. Wasn't very athletic. <laughs> so they got picked last for the team. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Anyone, anyone want to go next? And Brenda, I just muted you. So whenever you're ready to talk, you can unmute yourself just because you have some background noise. I really can't think of the last time I've been um, felt excluded out of something. So I'm not sure. That's good. I could say when you feel excluded, let me see. I would say when no one doesn't want to call you when things are happening and they leave you left out on that. Mm. I'm not going to be doing too much talking because I got Ian doing his school. Okay. Same here. <laughs> uh, one time, well, I remember one notable thing is when uh, Jenny was pregnant and we were going to all the prenatal. Uh, appointments and um the doctors would never speak to me they would only speak to jenny and i was like yo i'm here like what's good <laughs> um so that i felt excluded in those conversations a little bit so i had to I had to let myself be known that i was there and i wanted to pay attention i guess the doctors weren't used to it all right cool so brenda if you think of anything later let us know um so did everybody get a chance yet to look at the um, proposed agenda? If there's anything that people think we need to add or discuss today. From um, the email that Ms. Freeman sent was to add to November's agenda, the, oh, what was it? Uh, um, uh, what is it? Um, SLT agenda for parents that they need. To, there's too much seats available to vote in for the SLT election. Yeah, for sure. So when we get into um, setting the agenda for November, we got to put that in there for sure. Mm -hmm. And then she also made note, but um, for December meeting, I'm just putting it in here now, so so I can remember when it's recorded. Um, a note about the vote for change for date for March parent teacher conference. Yeah, that's right. Darlene, why, why are we doing the um, change on the parent-teacher conference? So we're doing the change in the parent-teacher conference because we started the year a, a month later than we expected. Um, normally, we have um, report cards in November and then January and then March, but we found that it's, it's coming up too close to each other, and we need a little bit more time to, for kids to be um, assessed and for us to make sure that we give the teachers enough time to make their report cards. It's also going to be a little bit closer to the time where we decide um, whether or not students are going to be held over. Um, we felt like we had the report card and then it would be like two or three months between um, the next time we would meet with families and we wanted to make it a little bit sooner. All right, cool, for sure. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, so let's get into it because we have a lot of stuff to discuss um, and we'll try to get done um, as soon as we can. 
So the first thing is, uh, so we don't have any committee reports yet because we haven't formed any committees, um, but getting into some of the stuff we discussed last meeting, the Scholastic Book Fair being probably one of the bigger ones. Um, so I sent out an email about the Scholastic Book Fair, um, but basically, uh, there, I mean, they, they have, you know, it's different across the country how people are handling uh, book fairs, um, but many people are doing virtual book fairs, and so Scholastic um, has been supporting that. Um, even though in the past you could have done a virtual book fair, it's not like a new service that they're providing. It's just more people are opting for it because of the blended learning and all this kind of stuff. Um, so the virtual book fair is a is a 14 day uh, book fair so that that's not something that we determined it's just everyone is 14 days um so basically during the 14 days um our our families can purchase uh books um and i'll show i'll show the video of the virtual book fair thing that they set up um so you know we 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 they can purchase books any books any book purchases over 25 dollars are um free shipping um, but that's for books. So if they're getting like novelty stuff, like, you know, erasers and pens and all that kind of stuff, that doesn't count to the $25 minimum. Um, it has something to do with the way taxes are collected or something like that. Um, and then at the end of it, we, as a PTA, we get 25% of the money raised um, before taxes, right? So we don't get 25% off the taxes. So whatever the final amount is, we get 25% of that um as our fundraising uh total so that's different from the past because in the past when you do an in-person book fair depending on how much is sold during the book fair it gives you a bigger percentage split also whether you choose scholastic dollars which is like their their internal money versus real money you get a higher percentage if you pick scholastic dollars so like last year we'd hit the we hit the highest benchmark in sales and we also opted for scholastic dollars. So instead of getting like 30%, we got 55% of all the money uh, raised last year, which is really great. But we're going to be fixed at 25%. But there's no minimum, which is good. There's no minimum that we have to hit. There's also, um, we don't get any benefit from doing scholastic versus regular money. So we probably will opt to do the regular money this, this go around. Um, so there's a lot of potential good opportunity with that. Um, I, I asked about if there was going to be like um, if there was way, ways to waive shipping um, for you know um, folks who were in need of it, and they said there's no way around that. But that a possibility could be that if people um, needed the assistance from Star, we could have the books shipped together to the school, and then we could do a distribution at the school. So we would have to work with our Star team and see if that's a possibility. Like say, for instance, we know there's 10 parents who, you know, really wanna buy books, but they can't do the extra shipping. We can have like a form that they can fill out and then, you know, they could send the funds to the Star Academy PayPal account. And then we could collect the Star Academy, pay the, the funds uh, raised there, make the purchase as one purchase and save on shipping uh, for those who are in need of it. It's a little bit more complex, but the, the, there's a po potential opportunity there. Um, so yeah, so let me show you the video real quick. Let me just share my screen. Uh, let's see if I could do this. The YouTube here. I think it should work. Hello, Horner family. This that? is Joe Ward, principal Monroe Elementary School. I'm just making this video to give you a quick tour of our uh, site for the online book fair that we have this year. So when you go on the link uh, to our homepage, you'll see Monroe Elementary School book fair at the top. Uh, if you don't see that at the top, you, then you're on the wrong link. You either got to follow the one that I sent out through an email or the one that your child's homeroom teacher sent out. Um, as you scroll down right here, the shop now will just take you to a normal looking um, site where you can browse through the books and the different things that they have. If you go to here, this is the cool part that I want to show you is the new virtual fair 360 degree tour of the fair. So click on right here, tour of the fair, and it's going to take you to something that looks actually like a book fair. So to come up, your account is linked to Monroe Elementary School. Shop now. Gives you a little icon key first. So that if there's something like looks like this, that you can watch the video, you can see book details, do a few of those other things. You can look at that. So this is like the home screen of the virtual fair. And then down here, you can go to the different places. So I can do preschool books, elementary books, or middle school books. 
I click on elementary school, it takes me to this cool looking fair. So it actually looks like a book fair. And if you click on the screen and just move it around, you, it looks like you're in a gym at a book fair. So you can go to those different, um, you can go to these different um, shelves, or I can hold it over there and I can go see middle school books. Or I can go over here and I can see preschool books, or I can go back to the home. So it's pretty neat looking. Um, if I go, let's, I'll click on this one. If I go into this, uh, I don't know, shelf, whatever this thing's called, it takes me a little bit closer to it. And now you can see all the books on that shelf. And if I hover over something, it has the title of the book, which is this one's Guts. What a great title of a book. Um, and then if you click on that, it comes to a little um, explanation, has a picture of it and a little explanation over. So that you get the sense that's basically that was a school principal after the book fair launch. Um, so that so the virtual fair becomes active to us on the day of launch. So we would do something similar. You know, we would set up this kind of uh, virtual tour. Maybe um, we can organize with the um, star team to do like a town hall style kind of setup where we uh, do on day one of the book fair, we do a launch and we take people through the tour. We could do a little Q and A session um, after we do the tour to help people uh, navigate it all. Um, but it's a pretty cool uh, setup that they provided. So any thoughts, questions on the book fair and, and what it looks like? Now, do all families have access to devices so that they're able to access um, the book fair? And two, what if families are not um, don't have funds? Is there any way that we could possibly purchase the, as for the PTA, like one or two books for them if they wanted to? Yeah, so in terms of um, the purchasing of books in the past, um, there's like, we used to get a percentage of books that were like, uh, low cost. And then we also used to get, um, we used to do this thing where parents could donate their extra change towards a, a, a general pot. And we use that money to then go ahead and purchase some books, purchase some um, novelty stuff that we could use as auction items later on, or as, um, you know, for events like a movie night, doing raffles of different items. So we definitely could do that. We also could um, propose to the, the parents if we wanted to allocate a dollar amount of, uh, you know, $100 from the PTA's funds towards purchase of books, that's definitely within um, our realm. In terms of devices, Darlene, I don't know if you have an update in terms of devices and everyone's access. Yes, so I just put in the chat, we have around 16 families who are still waiting for devices in pre-kindergarten and kindergarten. So that's the total right now that we have outstanding. Some of those families have cell phones and they're accessing, you know, through their phones, but their child themselves does not have a device. And the cool thing about the Scholastic virtual interface is that it's a website. So you don't have to download any software or any app or anything like that. It's through the website. Um, and the website is something that we can customize. Uh, so we could put like the star PTA banner and, you know, we can customize as much as we want. Um, so, so yeah. And then also too, if, um, they are going to send us some physical flyers to distribute if we wanted them, we, and, you know, we usually get like 250 or 300 flyers. Um, so this year we're only getting a hundred or so flyers because we don't have as many in-person students. Um, so we'll, we'll be able to get, get some flyers out. They're also going to give us um, some of the marketing material, like the posters and stuff like that. So we can put it, you know, in front of the school, on the door or wherever is approved um, by the STAR team. Um, but they're going to supply us with that. What's up, Ashley? What's up, Helen? We're just going over the Scholastic Book Fair um, that's happening later on this month. Okay. Sorry. I just got on back in the car sorry and i was i was dealing with the meltdown yeah no worries we're recording so we'll have this available for everybody perfect thank you good morning everybody happy monday happy monday good morning good morning all right cool um i think i think logistically with the book fair it's gonna be more in the sense of like marketing, like everything else is done. We don't need to do setup and all this kind of stuff outside of the website. It's more like just marketing um, on Class Dojo um, to listers that we have for parents, 
um, you know, via the Facebook page, like just getting out constant reminders before the book fair, during the book fair, um, you know, putting out uh, supportive like um, uh, flyers about how to logistically purchase books and stuff like that. Um, so if people are having trouble, you know, just kind of providing that support throughout the book fair um, versus like actually being in person selling books, it's going to be a little different this year. I think the how the video that uh, of the principal was really powerful, just kind of doing a little tour of showing. So if that's something that you want me to do, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I also like the idea of troubleshooting like I know there are going to be some parents who may have some trouble with actually purchasing and so I could see um the you know the PTA you know executive board role there being like that support of you know okay if you have a problem you know on this particular day it might be Marina you know who might help you or it might be a specific day that Sean may help you but um I think anticipating that is going to be important Yeah, for sure. And then, um, so I guess uh, at Thursday's meeting, when we present the book fair, we should also see who wants to get involved in helping organize for it. Um, so we could get like a little group of parents um, who were down to volunteer. So we could probably get even more people to assist in playing the tech support role um, or, you know, advertising um, in different spaces and all that good stuff. Um, cool. What else? I think that's it for the book fair then. So we're definitely going to get that on the agenda. So it'll probably be a big point. It's our first fundraiser of the year. Um, probably going to be our only fundraiser of the year, depending on how timing works out before the holidays. Um, so we can kind of build some momentum around that. And yeah, also the dates, it's going to be the Monday before Thanksgiving that it launches. And it goes, so I think that's, I forget the date, November. Um, 22nd or something like that and it goes to december 6th so it's a 14 day period um but oh this is the other thing that they mentioned to me we actually picked the latest option um before the holiday to ensure uh shipping to ensure that people get it before christmas um but we want to i think do an extra encouragement to our parents to try to purchase in that first week as much as possible so that they can ensure that the books get to them before the holidays. Um, because, you know, that's always uh, a stressful thing if you order something and then you're waiting a long time during the holiday. It's gonna be a crazier season than ever before in terms of online shopping and, you know, the postal workers and all that stuff getting backed up. So that's one thing that we, we wanna get on our parents' minds. All right, cool. So the next thing on the agenda uh, was just my report back from the President's Council. Um, so the President's Council had their meeting um, just before Halloween. So for those who don't know, the President's Council is basically uh, where all the district presidents come together. Um, and also um, there's some, um, uh, what's, the, what's that position called, Darlene? The parent, the parent coordinator? Oh, the parent coordinator? Yeah, some parent coordinators jump on sometimes, uh, vice presidents, all that kind of stuff. Um, but basically just everyone checking in with each other on a district level, see how things are going at their schools and bouncing ideas off of each other's head. The biggest thing that was discussed obviously was the opt-in thing that we talked about in length at, town, at the Star Town Hall last week. Um, so, I mean, basically everyone also expressing similar sentiment like we were here at STAR in terms of feeling like, you know, the move from four opt-in periods to two is a little unfair to parents. Um, there seems like there's gonna be a lot of pushback from, um, you know, the president's council and also on a citywide level, a big pushback from parents and, and teachers uh, against the chancellor and the mayor's uh, position on this. So even Darlene agrees, agrees that there might be uh, a change by the chancellor in a couple of months after feeling the pressure from everybody. Um, but um, Darlene, you wanna summarize for those who weren't at the town hall, some of the things that we discussed at the town hall? Sure, so we talked about the fact that uh, 
as a school leadership team, we met and talked about the fact that we thought it was unfair to only have two opt-in periods. So as a school, we are going to provide one more opt-in period. We're not saying specifically when, because I do think the chancellor is going to change his mind. Um, and when he does, then we'll be ready because we'll know that we had expected it. If he doesn't change his mind, then I know we're going to offer an additional time in February or March. I feel like that's a good time of the year. There'll still be enough um, of the rest of the year to fill in, but also the weather changes a little bit in February and March. And I think there's some families who really are worried about, you know, their child with asthma in cold weather and traveling. And so I wanted to offer an opportunity that's a little closer to spring. Um, and so I'm thinking February or March might be the best time. Um, so yeah, but we're just gonna do it our own individual opt-in time as a school. We'll do the same thing that we're doing now. We'll give people two weeks to decide. Um, and then we'll have two weeks as a school to program it. And then we'll start a new launch date. And it'll just be a third period, a third opt-in period um, for our families. And so far I've heard a lot of families are very happy that they have that chance. They still are thinking about November, but they don't feel stressed about it. Um, and they know that they have an opportunity to change their mind. And so I'm hoping that, you know, this is gonna be something that other schools think about as well, but for now it's just star, but uh, hopefully other schools in the district will do something similar. Yeah, and some other things at the President's Council that were notable were, um, District one, our district is actually, we have a higher percentage of kids in school versus the rest of the city. So we have 40% of children in school district wide versus the city, which is around 25%, which is pretty notable. Um, also uh, CPAC, which is the chancellor's parent advisory council, which is like the next body above the president's council. They're pursuing, um, that working with this company that helps expand bandwidth, internet bandwidth in communities. Uh, it's a company called, um, uh, or what the heck was it called? I'll put it in the chat somewhere. Oh, NYC Mesh Service. Um, and why this is important for us in District 1 is because District 1 Lower East Side is one of their bases. And basically what they do is they go on top of a high building and they set up this antenna service that increases bandwidth. Um, so we think about like in the projects and, and different, you know, housing developments around uh, the Lower East Side, um, that would be awesome. And so that's parent led. That's not a city led movement. That's a parent led movement. So we should think about how we can uh, become involved in that. Um, it might be like on top of Star Academy, you know, offering our rooftop um, for one of the bandwidth um, expansion things. Any Anything you wanted to add, Marina? Because you were also uh, at the President's Council meeting. No, I mean, I was sitting there listening and stuff like that. So mm -mm, nothing to add. Everything straightforward. All right, cool. Oh, and I, I, I got voted in as secretary on the President's Council. So I'm the secretary over there. Okay. All right. Cool. So if there's no other co comments about that. Any questions about the president council stuff, about the opt-in stuff that Darlene was talking about, about the mesh service thing? Well, I just want to say thank you for looking forward to the springtime as another opportunity to opt in because my main concern is basically just flu season and how it could be difficult to distinguish between just the regular flu and then what's going on now. So that's, I'm so glad that you're doing that because I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only parent who is worried about this regular flu season, right? So that's all. The teachers and families that came to me and told me this. So if it wasn't for our families and our teachers, I wouldn't have even thought of it. I really, I really wouldn't have. And it was their suggestion. So I'm just grateful that we have a community where people feel like they can say, you know what, this is really bothering me. Um, and they can, and we can, we can work it out together as long as we communicate, you know? Sure. And Darlene, are you able to join us on Thursday? At five, the, right? At five, yeah. Yes, I can stay for an hour. I can't stay beyond that, but I can definitely do five to six. Because there'll probably be some parents who are, are going to be there who weren't 
at the town hall. So maybe we can also do a summary again um, and maybe open up some discussion at the PTA meeting so we can keep engaging about it. Absolutely, I'll be there. All right, cool. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is checking in on finances. Um, so Helen and I got a chance to meet last week and we discovered what that uh, hundred dollars was, right, Helen? So at our last uh, board meeting, we were like, there's like a hundred dollars that was taken out of the star account, but no one's in the school, how that happened. And basically it was, it was a really old check that was finally cashed, which technically shouldn't have happened because usually checks that are issued go stale within, depending on the bank, anywhere from 90 days to six months. And this check was issued like two years ago. So that's something that we have to go and talk to find out at the bank. So that doesn't happen again. Yeah. I think it was like Miss Galker or something like that. It was like, yeah, it was like either for art or music. It was like a hundred dollar check that we gave two years ago and they finally cashed it. Mm -hmm. um, so in any case, that's what that, that, that missing money was. And then uh, Helen and I are, are working on um, the finance report for Thursday, but there's nothing uh, new because we haven't been using finances. It's more just uh, reorganizing um, our last financial report and um, getting the most up-to-date figures of what's in the TD account and all that kind of stuff. Anything else you wanted to add on that, Helen? I, I'm so sorry. I just missed the last minute of what you said because somebody just fell off the bed. So um, all I heard was TD Bank, we need to go in person. And it's yeah. just hard to schedule a time between our responsibilities of work and all of that. But we'll make it happen For sure. sooner than later. Within the next... I'm, I have more time this week than I did last week, so. Okay. For sure. All right, cool. Um, so, so if there's nothing else, maybe we should go into start, um, especially since Brenda has to leave soon, we can go quickly into um, the things that we think should be on the agenda for Thursday. Um, so we definitely have the book fair, um, our, our usual financial report, um, our report from our principal, um, anything else, uh, the vote for SLT members, the two last positions. So basically what happened with that is the SLT uh, realized that they could um, have up to, I think 16 members, eight of which being parents, eight of which being teachers. I think this was the first time in a long time we actually had voted in representatives from the PTA. Um, and so I think the SLT is very excited about that. And so they were like, let's just pack the house. So we got two more positions. One person has already been participating in the SLT and has expressed that she wants to definitely go for one of those positions. Um, but you know, it's an open kind of nomination election. Um, I, I, I don't foresee it uh, being uh, it being too contended. So it, it probably something we could get through fairly quickly. But uh, definitely want to encourage more parents to be on the SLT. So we'll get that on the agenda. Anything else that we wanted to get on the agenda? Did we want to get any discussion on um, um, the stuff around the opt-in period? Did we want to get that into the agenda? Opening up the floor for more discussion and questions on that. I'm more than happy to talk about that, yes. Cool. Anything else that comes to mind that people want to get on the agenda as a pressing thing? I mean, I'm sure this first meeting too, there'll be a lot of, um, we could leave a lot of time for like a Q&A period because there's going to be new parents, like pre-K parents who've never been to a PTA meeting who might be there, who want to know more about how the PTA runs and operates. There might be questions about like, um, you know, how we settled out last year Daddy. with finances and taxes. You know, there might be questions about all that kind of stuff. Daddy. 
I think everything that you just mentioned, I think that's fine because in a way I, I'm like, we don't really know what to expect, like how many people are gonna attend. And um, I want everyone to feel like if they wanna say something that they have a chance to be heard, right? And then, so I think we're pretty good, we're pretty set. And it, it'll, I think it'll be a good opportunity to just like set the stage of what to expect, right? To introduce ourselves to people, have a, a concise and agenda, and then just like, um, and I'm really interested in meeting like the new parents, because that's kind of like, you know, the earlier we get parents involved, the better, I think, on the long haul, especially if there's like, oh, my child is going to be in the school for the next four or five years or whatever, then it's good to, to have that. So, so it's better to not pack up the agenda with our points and leave more breathing room for discussion and engagement, for sure. Because we definitely always fill that hour up. There's never a problem with that. <laughs> All right, Brenda, I think we got it all. So uh, we'll let you know if we added anything afterwards. Have a good day. Okay, have a good day, guys. Be safe. Thank you. Have a good day. Happy Monday. <laughs> all right, cool. So the other things on our agenda might actually also be stuff that we want to add on to the um, Thursday agenda. So maybe we could go through those quickly. Um, so school pictures. Um, this is the first year in a long time, I guess, that we haven't had school pictures organized. That's something that the PTA uh, has historically done. Um, so I reached out to the company that does our school pictures or who had done our school pictures at least last year. I'm not sure if they did it the year before as well. Um, and basically, they, they, they're willing to work with whatever setup that we have. So they've done an outdoor picture day at one school. Then they did uh, another picture picture day and that was instead of two days, they stretched that out over four days so that there could be more uh, separation of kids, right? Like not bringing a hundred kids into an auditorium, but rather just like, you know, this group goes to the dance room at this time slot on this day and spacing it out, staggering it out. Um, so I, it was more a question I, from them. They were just like, what can, you know, what is your school capable of doing um, and we will make it happen. They were, um, they, they didn't think that they could get, depending on, you know, when it was scheduled out that they could get the pictures to us before, um, the holidays, unfortunately, I know a lot of people like to have the pictures before the holidays. Um, but I think, uh, pictures, you know, having pictures is better than not having pictures, whether it's for the holidays or not. So what, what do you think, any ideas on how we could do a picture day? Darlene, any ideas on restrictions and limitations at the school and where you could potentially see it being happen? I guess my only concern is this idea of so how do you take a school picture and social distance? Um, I just don't know how that would work. Because um, ultimately, as much as possible, we want the kids to have six feet between them. Um, and so part of me was wondering, like, is it pop? I mean, I know it's crazy to think maybe we'd have a vaccine, but do you think it would make sense to try and wait until April or May? Um, I don't know. I, I'm really, I'm really on the fence about this one because I just feel like even let's say we were to do pictures in school, if with our classes being so small, we only have you know a really small amount of kids, you know maybe six kids at most on a class, and so I'm not sure what that class picture would look like. Um, I definitely see an opportunity for individual pictures. Like we could just say this year, there are no class pictures. They're only individual pictures um, and sibling brothers and sister pictures. Um, so yeah, that's the only thing I'm thinking about is just this idea of social distancing and what that would look like. Um, and if we were to do it outside, um, I don't know, like you, you still have to wear a mask. Like it's just not, it's not as cute. Yeah, Ashley. Um, so there was, um, at my mom's school, they had an option of doing virtual school pictures. So it allowed families to take their own pictures and there are photo companies. I, I'm not sure on hand, I can get some names and shoot them over to you and Sean and the whole team. Um, but 
they're willing to work with whatever virtual, whatever pictures that we send them and they can put a background and they have options of different backgrounds we can put with the pictures. So this way it keeps the social distancing. We don't have to do too many arrangements of in school or out school and the, the families have a choice of what they want their kids to wear and look like for that time. That can be also a possibility and I can definitely get those um, the names of the, the companies because they work with schools. I like the idea of that. I mean, it feels safe. Um, it feels also like everybody, every single person can participate. Um, and then if it was really a, a struggle for a certain family, we could always say, come to the school, I'll take your picture and then I'll add your picture to it. Or we'll have one of our assistant teachers help to take pictures. They love to do that. Um, I, I could see that. I could really see that. Yeah, I think the even the picture part is not the hardest part is the prints, you know, getting the nice prints, the glossy prints. Um, so actually, I think that would be the thing like cause if they could do the prints for us and, and, and mail it to the, the families because pictures, you know, we could do the pictures and we could Photoshop something into the background that that takes like three seconds. So the company, you know, for it to be worth the money that we're going to pay them. I think they need to be able to provide the prints and mail it to the families. And what would that all look like? You know, shipping they actually, and handling and all that kind of stuff. They would, they would take care of everything. All we would have to do is give them the pictures and they could, they would share with us options that are available as per background, but they take care of the prints and they distribute it to the family families Perfect. due to COVID. So we really don't have any like extra work we would have to do. Perfect. And then also too, we could even, um, I don't know if any of those companies do it, but they, we could even do like Photoshop groups together, you know, just get everyone's heads together and, you know, it won't look as, as cool as a group picture, but I think it'll be fun for the families. That's what um, I was thinking when Ashley mentioned it, just this idea of like the class picture, but it could be like a, I don't know what you call that, but yeah, like, like you said, a Photoshop of all, of all their little faces. Um, it, would, it would be cute too if everybody was wearing like the same color or something like that you know that could be really cute yeah sounds good actually you're gonna add something oh go ahead honey no that since we're talking about school pictures i think the whole thing of being in a group um yasmin started at star after class pictures were done so i and she took her picture during the retake so i ordered a class picture and i ordered one picture, of her. this is my favorite picture. This is the only picture I have in my whole apartment, okay? Because I don't like clutter. Anyway, and when she saw the class picture and she saw that she wasn't in it, it was very upsetting to her. More so than I ever, ever. and I'm just like, you weren't at the school at that time, but it didn't click, right? So I think scratching the whole school picture or doing a collage, it's either all or nothing. It can't be like, kids are missing because we don't want them to then you know be upset even more over something that is kind of like logistically hard to make happen yeah that makes sense all right cool so so ashley uh do some more research on on the, these different companies and then maybe at our next meeting uh as like board meeting we could have some of that info and we can figure out what course we want to take and present it to the parents all right cool um the other thing that we discussed uh, and, and pretty uh, decent length at our last meeting. And then when uh, we had our check-in with um, Darlene and Jody, um, me and uh, Marina, um, we talked at great length was about the mutual aid fund. And is there something that we could logistically handle as a PTA, um, like getting an actual mutual aid fund and running, operating uh, fund distribution to parents in need and all that kind of stuff. So for those who weren't part of those conversations, basically the idea is that we create some kind of emergency fund um, that we could support each other as a star community doing some fundraising or a percentage of all of our fundraisers, sending a percentage of all of our fundraising to our mutual aid fund. And they're, they're being basically like an application process when someone's in some financial need, some financial hardship, maybe they can't pay rent or buy food for their family, they can apply to this mutual aid fund and we could allocate whatever dollar amount we can um, you know, do within, within reason um, we could allocate that money. Um, it, it's a it's a very big project, um, but it's something that I think during COVID and during the pandemic would really be a way of the PTA stepping up 
um, and supporting each other. And I think a lot of our parents would be excited about volunteering to support the mutual aid fund. So not only making donations, but being part of the logistics. Some logistical challenges are um, when Jody did a, like a mini aid fund in the spring. Some of the challenges are like, you know, um, making sure that funds are distributed fairly, making sure that there is a streamlined process of collection of funds and then distribution of funds that um, is legal and it doesn't break any kind of boundaries, right? Uh, privacy boundaries and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, having like a person or persons on hand to be responsive to applications that are coming in, um, having, you know, like the privacy uh, um, set up so that people feel comfortable reaching out to us, um, how to prioritize uh, kids who are, you know, who are in more need than other kids. Um, so, you know, kids living in shelters and, and all these and temporary housing and all this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of logistical stuff um, and it's a big project. There'll probably have to be a committee formed around it, uh, but we wanna just keep the conversation going on how y'all all feel about it and, and what you think we should do. So any thoughts about the mutual aid fund? I think, I didn't even know this was a thing, <laughs> but I'm glad it is. Um, I think maybe, like how would you, I mean, the applications that be done online or in person, how, I mean, there's a really a lot to, to kind of flesh out, but I think it's a good idea. I mean, anything we can do to support families and students. Um, and then I also think that the threshold of how much the, the dollar amount that you're giving out, I think that's important to, from the get to decide, was it $50 or 75 from the get, right? Because- um, How yeah. often one can apply and get the funding. Yeah, like that sort of stuff. I mean, maybe even just it only being a one-time thing, right? Because we know that there's a lot of need. Yes, when we did this, um, really, it was kind of a impromptu thing that we did because the pandemic hit, we went into remote learning, people lost their jobs, really, it happened so quickly um, that we found that there were some families that told us they can't pay their electric bill, where they don't know where they're going to get, you know, their next groceries from. Um, and so at that point, we had families donating uh, money to us. And I think by that, I think there was like $1,500, like $1,500 that Ms. Friedman had collected from friends and family and staff. Um, and we asked families to, you know, let us know what they needed. Um, and really a lot of families, it was, I need to pay my, I need to pay my Con Edison bill. I need to get food. Um, and we were giving out in hundred dollar increments. I don't think it has to be that much now. Um, I do think, you know, Helen's point of maybe like $50 does make sense. Um, everybody who applied did really, it, there wasn't an application process. It really was us just knowing our families really well. But I think with the PTA, you would have to have some sort of more formal process. Um, and we, you know, I, I think it was really, really helpful. And people only did it one time, um, kind of to Ellen's point, because there were so many people that needed, but we were able to give everybody at least, you know, that, that $100 to get them going. Um, and then I think it was really helpful for people. Yeah, I feel like if there's a consensus that we like this idea, that maybe at the PTA meeting on Thursday, we just put out the call for those who are interested in helping organize the mutual aid fund. Um, and being on like a, a, a de facto committee or a full, a full, full on committee um just getting the poll of that and then we could have a meeting specifically around the mutual aid fund and organizing it um and, and get some more parents involved in that process and maybe like helen's saying maybe it is just like we make an attempt at a once a one-time you know fundraiser but if it's successful and logistically we feel like we can handle it it could be something that's ongoing depending on how this pandemic plays out for the rest of the year I also think if we have the mutual aid fund, our fundraising on every other level 
will be successful if we tie it back to our mutual aid fund. Like if people know that 25% of the book fair, 25% of bake sales, 25% of whatever we're doing is all going to the mutual aid fund. Um, obviously we have to get that approved by the PTA. We can't make that decision, but I think it would encourage more participation in other fundraisers as well. Cause people know where the money's going and that it's going to our families. Anyone opposed to the mutual aid fund think it's just too much for us to take on and I think I'm not opposed. I just think the more straightforward and simpler it is, the better, because it is a lot of work, right? <laughs> Especially if we start, you know, screening people and, you know, if we're going to formalize it, just make streamline it too. For sure. And I talked to the, the um, other folks in the district. No one else is doing this in the district. So we can really, as, as historically we have done at STAR, provide leadership and give that example of how it can be done and maybe encourage that example to other schools in our district and maybe even across the city, you know, really showing parents coming together and supporting one another. And I think it'd be uh, very impactful for, for not only STAR, but for the rest of the kids around the city. Cool, we, get, we could get uh, Helen on New York One doing interviews. New York of the week, there we go. All right, cool. So then the, the next thing that we had on the agenda is our Thank Our Lucky Stars event. Um, this is a historic event that we've talked about um, that we want to, we talked about our last meeting, we want to try to do as many of our annual events as possible to maintain regularity, to maintain community at STAR, um, to, you know, make people feel um, like things, even though we're going through a challenging period, we're still coming together. So thank our lucky stars, obviously will probably mean more this year than any other year. Ideas that we were bouncing off each other's head was probably uh, possibly doing like a virtual potluck, which is kind of weird because we can't share the food, but you know, we could come together, um, you know, eat together and hang out and create like little activities, breakout rooms with like bingo in one room and people just, you know, talking in another room and, people listening to music and dancing in another breakout room. Um, so what do, what do folks think about doing a Thank Our Lucky Stars event and, and how that could look this year? Ashley, you've been a big part of the Thank Our Lucky Stars events in the past. Can you talk about like, what has the event meant to the school? Like, why do we do it? Um, well, we usually do it to like get our our whole school together and it allows the, the uh, parents and as, as well as the staff to kind of share their um, their family tradition of dishes or what, you know, what their family really likes in their house. Um, so we have a lot of different um, different dishes that are offered during, during this time. Um, I know a lot of people have had different foods. I've heard, I had foods that I never even heard of before and I couldn't even repeat to you what it was, but I know I had a, 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 um, a dish with like chicken and gravy and it had like all sorts of different vegetables with it. It was delicious, but I've never had it before. And it was, it was, it's interesting because you get to learn about other people's nationalities and, and their dishes from, from where they come from. Um, and staff members also get involved in this as well. It's really good. Um, it's a really good event to kind of have our families and staff kind of bond together and um, come together. I think the break rooms are actually really good because when we do it in school, we always have like some kind of activities going on, um, at least one or two. So to have an option of, of doing it virtually that leaves room for like, you know, two, three rooms. Um, so I do think that that's a good idea. Um, I am kind of curious to know how we would share our meals. Um, maybe it's something also uh, for families who can't join. Maybe we can offer like, um, I don't know, offer like something where they can like send us a picture of their, their meal from their family. If it's something that they can't, you know, virtually join in with us. This way, you know, like Helen had mentioned before, no families are feeling left out for any kind of events especially during this time. I don't know. 
Yeah, because there's also that consideration that some people maybe weren't having having dinners with family, maybe they didn't have that kind of family structure, or they didn't have the funds to do like an organized family event. So that was kind of also the potluck component was like, you can come regardless, if you can make a donation or not. Um, so maybe it's like also too, and what you're saying, Ashley, with the spirit of like, embracing each other's cultures and, and traditions, maybe we also do like recipe sharing people want to share their recipes of their dishes maybe that you know maybe it's not like an actual zoom call where we're eating looking at each other like weirdos but like we have like a social event and at the event we could present like some of the recipes that different parents have contributed um and maybe it gives people ideas for recipes that they want to use um during their holiday celebrations um and then we could have that the breakout rooms for the the games and stuff like that for adults and for kids um so yeah, any other ideas on that on how we could how, how it could look? Just thinking about the music piece, it might be interesting to have families kind of suggest a playlist of some sort, whether it's you know some you know a song from your culture that you know is really funky that people would want to dance to, um, or you know something that may be related to you know to whatever holiday you may be celebrating in November and December, but it might be interesting to have families make suggestions and then create kind of like a Star Academy playlist of like songs that are important to people's lives or traditions or culture. The other thing, I guess, you know, it is already November 9th and Thanksgiving, uh, which is not exactly what this event is tied to, but has a lot of influence on this event because um, not everyone celebrates Thanksgiving, but we try to usually do it around Thanksgiving. Um, that's on the 26th. So we like two weeks away. Um, so it's something, you know, I think we got to think about the date. I think last year we did it on a Friday, right, Ashley? I think it was on a Friday. The Friday before Thanksgiving, I think we did it. Yes, we did. Yes. So for us, if we try to do that, that would be next Friday. I don't know if that is something that we think we could do. We could, though, do it after Thanksgiving, because especially if we're talking about like recipe sharing and all that kind of stuff and tying it into the greater holiday season. Um, it could be like uh, December 4th, which is the Friday after Thanksgiving. People could also even like share pictures of their, you know, what it, what they ate on Thanksgiving Day or, you know, something, you know, post Thanksgiving, you might have like pictures or something that you could share. Yeah, I don't think we need to do it before Thanksgiving or thanks taken. <laughs> It's true. I mean, you know, a lot of like the Friendsgiving events don't necessarily happen on Thanksgiving the before or after. And also too, um, you know, we just want to be mindful that whatever we could have done last year in person is going to take a little bit more effort this year, not in person. So I think we always want to give ourselves a little bit more comfort, a little room, so we don't feel stressed about organizing events. So maybe at the Thursday meeting, we could put out a proposed date of December 4th or even December 11th and see what people think about it. And also to see if people wanna help um, with contributing volunteerism to it, you know, if they wanna help with the logistics of it all, we can get a little crew together for that. Will you be able to um, post it on Dojo like after the, the meeting, post on Dojo like the options, this way they, the other parents can also have a vote like you did with the other the other time frame. Oh, so like doing a poll after our Thursday meeting for the two dates. That is definitely an option for sure. All right, cool. Nice. A anything else on the Thank Our Lucky Stars? I think we're getting through this agenda pretty well. Um, oh, shoot. I lost my agenda. Oh, there it goes. Um, so yeah, so I think that so so just some upcoming calendar things to put on your your calendar. So the next general meeting, November general meeting is next Thursday. I mean, this Thursday, uh, the 12th at 5 p.m. Um, I remember too, the, everything's recorded now. So even though we want executive board meetings to be at the PTA meetings, you know, don't, if you can't make it for whatever reason, don't, don't, go, don't go crazy about it, just let us know. Um, 
especially if there's something you have to present at a general meeting and you can't make it, just let us know and someone else can present it for you. That's okay. Um, the Scholastic Book Fair, the dates are November 23rd. So that's Monday, November 23rd is when it launches and it's gonna run to Sunday, December 6th. Our next meeting, the executive board meeting is on December 1st. Um, it's 10 a.m. is a little tough for Ashley. Are people down with moving to 10.30? 10.30 would be better, right, Ash? Yeah, it would be. Sorry, it's just I do pick up and drop off at that time, and then uh, Carter has the first live session. And yeah. I'm traveling in the car. Yeah, and for me, too, the baby's, like, finishing her online class at 10, and then I'm, like, ru rushing to get on this call. Would people be down for 10.30? Marina, could you do that? I mean, I could do it, but, you know, knowing that my son's still, you know, doing the remote learning, it's in between because it's the way he goes on and comes off, goes on, comes off. So I'd be able to work it. Um, you know, it's not hard. You you see me like I get up, I move around. So, I mean, this is what we got to do now, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. And Helen, I thought you thumbs up. All right, cool. And Darlene, I saw her shaking of the head. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, so, and remember our, our exec board meetings are only once a month. Um, so December 1st, 10 30, we'll move to then our next general meeting before the holidays, the last one of the year will be on December 9th at 5 PM. Um, and that is basically, you know, um, until we finalize our thank our lucky stars event, that will be our calendar for the rest of the year, which is pretty, um, workable, I think. Um, anything else that anyone wanted to add? Any questions? Anything uh, that they want on the Thursday agenda that wasn't mentioned before we close? All right, cool. Yo, we did it in 57 minutes. We done. <laughs> All right, team. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you soon. We'll check in this week. Have a great day, everybody. See you Thursday. You. See you Thursday. Peace. Bye.